how did you get the role of, uh, of John Constable or Constable John Constable? <laughs> it was, you know, obviously because I was a fabulous actor. Uh, I'd like to say that story, but it's not true. I uh, auditioned for it. The guy had one line like, uh, are, are you ready? Or, no, I lie. Yeah. Are you ready to go? That was the line. I had to walk into Molly's Bridge, get the other RCMP officer and get him to leave. Uh, so I had, um, I remember the audition. I worked on it. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? You know, I, I, I did it a million different ways. So I get there. Uh, they uh, do the line. They say, uh, oh, uh, can you grow a mustache? I went, yeah, sure. I can grow a mustache. He said, oh, all right. So uh, uh, what size are you? I said, I'm uh, 42 tall. He went, oh, okay. Then they kind of smiled. I think, well, maybe, you know, I guess. And then they, I did the line two or three different ways. And so I left him thinking, well, it's okay. My agent said, but phoned me and said, you got the part. I'm like, oh, cool. I said, it's great that they could, they could actually tell what a good, great actor I was by only one line. <laughs> but then I found out later it's because they only had one RCMP, extra RCMP uniform, and it was 42 tall. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's, so if I would have been a 38 medium, I'd have been still back at that meat pack plant or something in Alberta. <laughs> Um, yeah, I saw you're uh, from Alberta. Um, I'm actually uh, born and raised in Alberta as well. Uh, Stony Plain. So I'm pretty close to uh, Wetaska. Yeah, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I, I know it well. Got a speeding ticket in Stony Plain. What is it? They get the highway, you get the Yellowhead Highway, and yeah. then they, you're going fast, and you think you're safe going through Stony Plain, and you always get a ticket. I don't yeah, know. it goes right down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, yeah, no, I've been there. <laughs> what was your uh, first I probably set played. Like? I, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, and actually, I probably played Stony Plain too. I worked for Citadel on Wheels, and we traveled all over uh, Alberta doing shows in high school. And I'm pretty sure I played in Stony Plain. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's a nice little community. My, my, it is. Uh, my first day on on the set was a uh, um, rather interesting. I remember I, I I I took the bus up the night before, and I. If you've ever been, anyone's ever been to to Gibson's or Molly's Reaches, I I got off at the bus stop too early. I got off by Molly's Reach, but the motel I was staying was at something called School Hill, and it is straight up for about <laughs> six or seven blocks. And I had, you know, had a little suitcase at the time, but I remember walking up and thinking, "My God, this is going to kill me by the time I get to the top." So worked the next day, and uh, it was strange, you know, it. Uh, Got there, and I think I, I think I squeezed two days out of it too, which was even better. But it was, you know, I'd uh, I'd been on a couple film sets before. Uh, everyone was extremely friendly. Uh, Robert Clothier, the actor, and uh, uh, played Relic, and Bruno uh, played Nick. And both of them were uh, theater actors, right? And they knew that uh, that I had done a lot of theater in Vancouver and in, in uh, across Canada, even even though I was only in my early 20s. So I'd worked with some people that had worked with them. So you have that kind of relationship where if, uh, if they expect you're, you're one of the tribe, it, uh, they're, a little, they're, they're kind to you. And they were. It was, yeah. uh, it was great. Um, so that was your first day on set. Uh, what was it like kind of uh, over the course of, uh, I think, 171 episodes you were in, I think? Uh, if I remember right. Um, but over the course of your time, what was it like on set? Was it like a very happy, fun set? Uh, everybody's having a good time. You're in a beautiful part of the country. Yeah, all of those things. It was it was a great spot. I mean, to say that your job was going, you know, to Gibson's and then head out in a boat and play around in the water. And, uh, and uh, we had a great crew. Uh, we were far enough from Toronto at that time that we could just do our, our, our own thing. But we didn't have long hours. Um, it really was a little bit of a, a it seemed a bit, I didn't, it probably sounds terrible to say this, it seemed like you were on a holiday, you know, <laughs> not quite a long, long way away from Vancouver, mm -hmm. but enough that it's, uh, that ferry trip is, is, a, is a gorgeous ferry trip, but it's only 45 minutes long, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you feel like you're in a different world. And the strange thing is Gibson's today, you know, um, well, 48 years after they started, uh, and, uh, oh God, you know, probably 40 or, yeah, yeah, just about 50. Yeah, 48 years, probably 42 years since I started. Lower Gibson's hasn't changed that much. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of the same people are at the same pubs, uh, <laughs> sitting at the table, at grandma's table. Uh, the buildings haven't changed. Molly's Reach is still there. We hope, you know, they're they're trying to sell the lease on the. Uh, on the restaurant, but let's, let's hope that someone picks it up because I'd hate for that building to be torn down. Mm-hmm. We're right in the middle now of, uh, of trying to restore the Persephone, the next boat. At, uh, we, we restored it once when we did the, did the TV movies in 02, and, um, and that was neat, uh, but uh, it's been sitting outside since, and it's, uh, it, has to, it has to move from its place. So uh, we've got a fundraising campaign, which actually the, um, we've had some interesting responses from it. So people kind of relate to uh, Canadiana and those icons of the jet boat and, and the Persephone. Um, when you look at kind of when somebody sees a show successful, it's like a hundred episodes. You've, you know, you're a hit show. You've lasted. Were you surprised by, by the beachcombers uh, with not only its initial success, but just how long it's, it, it went. And then, like you said, the TV movies and things like that afterwards. Yeah, I was shocked. I was, uh, I was telling you about working with the Citadel Theater. I was driving in Northern Alberta, the actor's van, right? Although the actor's crew, it's Alberta, so it'd be the actor's crew cab. Uh, and, uh, and they were interviewing uh, Nick Bruno Jerusi about the show. And I remember saying to the rest of the actors, God, this sounds like a terrible premise, right? A couple of guys go out and, and, and pick up logs in the water. I mean, how that's going to last like a week. And then, the next year I was doing that audition I told you about. So I, I think they didn't think it was going to go. CBC Toronto thought they'd, uh, they wanted to cut it. They actually, they started filming in 71. They were, and they decided not to put on the episodes in 71. They, they tried some different episodes and, and they honestly thought when they put it on in 1972, uh, that it would just, they would just run out. They just wanted to run all the episodes and get rid of it. But after the first week, just something bizarre happened. And, I think it may have had something to do with the, we went on Sunday, October 2nd, 1972, and Canada beat Russia in the, in the hockey championship in that Thursday. So I think there was a kind of a sense in, in, uh, in Canada about, wait a minute, you know, we should be proud of who we are, what we are. And the quirky kind of characters kind of caught on with people. Now, I don't know whether it caught on in, in, in Main Street, Toronto or whatever, but it was a kind of a dysfunctional family. I mean, you had a Greek, you know, you had a couple of First Nations kids, you had a, a, a single grandmother raising two orphans on their own. Uh, and, and you have this really bizarre group of characters and this crazy character who, would, who is just a scoundrel. And for some reason, those characters kind of resonated with with, with Canadians. Maybe, I think maybe it's because of small town. You take a look at the history of Canadian television and the ones that shows that seem to be extremely successful are the ones just, one on the fringes, whether they're mm-hmm. Corner Gas or Schitt's Creek or Beach or, or something else, you know, the shows, even Heartland is doing so well. It's, it's, not, it's not, not downtown. It's kind of on the edge of, uh, of, uh, of this crazy country that we have. And, and the characters, it's all, it's all about the characters uh, adapting to the, you know, to the world mm-hmm. that they're in. I, I didn't honestly didn't think it would certainly go 19 years, which is still the longest running, uh, you know, half hour show in Canada, mm-hmm. you know, go figure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what's it like going back to Gibson's and seeing the shooting locations and meeting fans uh, who, who've been watching the show for, for years? It's, it's fun. You know, we never had social media, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting now that people, and I don't know if you've ever been to the face, the friends of the beach mm-hmm. Facebook site, people from all over the world, you got some unbelievable fans from Germany or our continent. We got a couple of fans from New Zealand who are always there. I mean, you go and it gets so not having social media, you do the show, we get, you know, get a couple of million people, hell for numbers of years, we've been, we beat out a hockey night in Canada. And then, but you don't know, right? You know, I'd lived in Vancouver and I, you know, go up there for the summers and I'd maybe meet some people in the summer. I mean, we had tons of tourists that would go up in the summer. We had to put bleachers outside Molly's Reach. We had hundreds of people watching us film, but, uh, and, and to this day, to this day, this weekend, you could go up to Gibson's and there'd be people, you know, standing in front of it. Someone sent me the picture the other day of this motorcycle gang that was up there and they're all, all in front of Molly's Reach getting their, their pictures taken. And 
it's kind of taken me at, till after the show was over to realize that, you know, over that period of 19 years, you know, sure, the audiences would come and grow. Maybe the audiences grow out of the show or whatever. But you'd still have, when you think of all those episodes, 365 episodes, and uh, even if even if they averaged only a million, right? I mean, 365 million people in a country of whatever, you know, at that time, 20 or 22, that's a lot of people watching the show. There's a lot of closet beachcomber fans out there. <laughs> I even think the uh, the new kids in the hall had a sketch about that, about how they hated the beachcombers. They'd never ever watch the beachcombers. And then they would start talking about, remember the episode with I Relic do. did that? I, I never watched the show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> Dave Foley's a buddy of mine, actually. So I, I, I thanked him for that, uh, that episode. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I love kids in the hall, but no, I do remember that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, you played. That one got uh, mentioned on The Simpsons. Yeah, you did. Uh, I mean, that's got the ultimate. Right? Last year, right? I think yeah, that's right. Year, on yeah. the Canadian episode. That's right. I and loved it. That the teacher was going to force all the kids. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, so I'm think. I think we've done it, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So you you played an RCMP officer. What was that like? And kind of what was the response like from the RCMP uh, to you you playing that role? You know, interesting question. Uh, I was they made an honorary sergeant in the RCMP. I, I, I don't know. I guess I was a little goofy. I, I think I only took out my gun once. I never shot it at anybody. And I was actually really disappointed in myself that I, I let them let me take out a gun. I should have probably it would have been wonderful to go through the whole series. Uh, yeah, he was a part of the town. He was a, you know, a small town guy as well. It was all about friendships. There was... You know there is that conflict always in, uh, in 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 a bit of a cop shows. It's an easy thing to write. You know someone does something wrong and you try to catch him, and by catching it you you screw it up or whatever. Um, yeah, I uh, I, uh, I the feedback has been 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 okay, right? I I, I a lot of uh, over the years has got me out of a lot of speeding tickets when I get recognized by the. By the by, the boys and or in the in the in the the women RCMP officers as well, um, but it's uh, yeah I you know I'm 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 okay with it. Um, the strange thing is when you think of Canada, and and what our show was about, especially with the our Indigenous characters, and how I had this great relationship with with all you know with all the characters in the show, whether it's Sarah, the young girl, or obviously Jesse, uh, you know, and now, they, now when you look back at it, it's one of these things you go, were we telling Canada what it was really like in Canada? Or maybe, mm -hmm. or were we? Right, you know, I mean, there was, you know, uh, I remember thinking about, I grew up next to a First Nations uh, reserve in Alberta and, and until I was on the show. And, and I was, when I was acting in that group as well, we, we toured residential schools. And I remember being, you know, 18 years old at the time, and and uh, I actually have a note that I sent back to uh, our, our general manager saying that something seemed wrong. I, I questioned why we were there. I mean, uh, I, you know, I, there was there was something wrong. So, but during that that 16 years I was on the show with with Pat and, and Charlene, Alec, and and Corey and uh, Marianne, uh, and and obviously people like Chief Dan George and George mm -hmm. Clunacy. I got, I, I got a bit more of understanding about the indigenous, um, you know, relationship with Canada. And uh, I, uh, I, uh, I got the sense that maybe, I mean, they were extremely kind to me. And, and I have maybe have the feeling that maybe Canada wasn't as kind to them, uh, First Nations people as, uh, as they were to me. So that's something that's changed, but that's only changed in the last you know, that thinking has only changed in the last maybe, maybe year or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you look back and you think, okay, uh, I mean, we'd get lots of wonderful feedback from indigenous people that, that would say that um, it was great watching the show that for the first time they could see someone who looked like them on television. And this was a scoop generation too, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and that's, uh, that was great for, for, for Charlene and, uh, and, and Pat John and Corey and, uh, and, and the rest of our indigenous uh, actors, that there was some something that uh, that someone could look at and say, you know, that's me up there. 
as opposed to hey, we're from a generation of a lot of old white television. And uh, uh, I think that's, you know, uh, I guess that's a kind of a two edged sto uh, story about we were doing those things. Okay, we, I was looking at an episode the other day that that had us, okay, there was, a, it was when we were introducing a female RCMP officer, which was a kind of an interesting thing at the times. And this was, I'm thinking the show was 78, right? So we're talking a fair bit of time ago. And, and the show opened with someone unveiling a statue of someone. And we find out during the show that this person was extremely unkind to indigenous people in the community, right? Kind of like, you know, what we're seeing today. Yeah, and then yeah. the, the statue disappears, right? So I'm thinking, this is 78. And we're doing something that people are talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, what, and every once in a while you go, wow. I mean, we did shows about uh, uh, land rights. Molly's Reach was on indigenous land and, uh, and the lease was coming up. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, I, I, I think there was an attempt there to, to tell those stories. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know how successful we were, but uh, uh, I kind of hope the uh, intent was, uh, was, it was accepted in the right way. Well, definitely ahead of its time. Um, when did you kind of realize that this is kind of a big show, like where you, maybe when you first recognized it on the street or uh, just kind of when did it dawn on you that like, you know, this is not just a little show, this is a part of Canadiana. You know what, I, living in Vancouver, I was doing, in certainly in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, I was doing a lot of work. I was doing, I, I would, I would have, I had the TV series, so I was doing that maybe six months. I would try to do a, at least a stage show, and then in the time betweens where I wasn't, I was doing American television and actually also CBC uh, uh review shows, uh, you know, uh, music shows. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was doing a lot of work. So, but Vancouver at that time, up until probably Expo 86, Vancouver was a small place. So people would nod at you all the time. But it's, you know, Canadian, it's totally different than in the States, right? I mean, I've got f some friends who are massive stars. And to be with them in LA or New York is, 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 is a zoo, mm -hmm. right? People, I mean, they're taking pit, whatever, the the paparazzi are there. Vancouver really wasn't that way, right? Uh, yeah, you'd get, you'd get recognized, but people just kind of nod at you, and it was no big deal. Uh, I, I don't think I ever had any, uh, uh, any negative things. I, uh, I do remember one time someone, when I still have my number uh, listed, that shows you how interesting times it was, someone <laughs> wanted me to play Santa Claus for their kids at Christmas, and they called me a couple of days before Christmas. I said, uh, no, sorry, I just don't do that. And they, they gave me a rough time for being this kind of elite um, <laughs> kind of person who would, who would stoop to. I went, come on, really, I've got my own kids. If I'm going to dress up as Santa, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that for myself. Mm -hmm. yeah, even though I was the, uh, the uh, I got to shh, close the store for a second. I was the, uh, the Santa Claus at the Bonnie Dune Shopping Center in Edmonton uh, oh. one year when I was still in high school, so it was a road trip. <laughs> nice. Um, so just the, the last question, um, when I, th the reason I'm doing this episode is I, uh, I saw something tweeted, Canadian history, something like that, and it mentioned the beachcombers, and I retweeted it and said, you know, maybe I should do an episode on this. And I got a whole bunch of people saying, yes, you know, do it for sure. All these people saying do uh, the beachcombers. So why do you think that it, the show has such staying power with so many people, uh, like you said, the Facebook group and everything, almost 30 years after, after it's ended? Yeah. Yeah, and that's interesting, isn't it? That's something, and, and, and again, how people would even find that Facebook. There's a, there's a petition somewhere on the, on, on the internet about trying to get CBC to put the shows back on gym or something, right? And I was thinking, okay, so how does, how does someone find that? Do there, are they sitting at home one night? Are they just, you know, and all of a sudden think of the beachcombers and then they go and they will Google beachcombers and then maybe find this, this path to do this petition, put their name on it, or then find this Facebook site. I mean, what triggers that? For a while it was on uh, Aboriginal people's television network in the app, but like at two o'clock in the afternoon, it was mm -hmm. nothing that you'd tend to that demographic. But I think it's a lot to do with what it reminds people of. 
uh, there's this wonderful lady that came up to me the other day and she smiled and not too close, obviously, in this new world. But <laughs> she was saying that uh, seeing me reminded her of her dad in Sunday nights after mm -hmm. Disney. And she called it the three B's, right? It was like bed, bath, and then beachcombers. Uh, no, bed, beachcombers, bath, and then bed, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, <laughs> and it was a simpler time. There was like mm -hmm. two or three channels. There was like one TV in the house. So if you're going to watch television, you'd watch it with your family. And there's probably not that many shows now that people do that uh, on a, certainly on a, on a, maybe on a Sunday night or whether, you know, I'm sure that with PVRs and everyone having their own TV or watching, you know, watch streaming something mm -hmm. that you don't do, you don't sit down as a family anymore and, and watch it. So I think that's it. I think that's it. I think they remember the show as a kind of a simpler, gentler time in Canada and probably the world. Mm -hmm. And so so maybe it's a kind of a feel good and it's got a lot of uh, good emotional equity. I would love if it went on to uh, CBC gem because I, I look for it. I can't find it. Uh, there's some episodes that are on YouTube, but there's only like, yeah. I think like eight episodes. So <laughs> pretty small sample yeah, size. And some of that's, yeah. It's, it's some of that is just, yeah. Again, it's, it's, I can't figure it out. I mean, CBC we've you know, chatted over the years. They'll, I actually even had a heritage, someone from the heritage department asked CBC about that. And they, <laughs> uh, they said, well, there's a rights issue. So and that right, that CBC talk for, if they put it on, they'd have to pay people, which is yeah. okay. Cause you have to pay the actors and the writers and the musicians. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is CBC putting foreign broadcasting on. So please don't spend my tax money, cross border shop with my tax money. If you're going to do mm -hmm. that, put Canadian show from an incredible archives, I, I've got a copy of what they have in their archives there. You could you could put up a whole new network of, of, of I mean, National Film Board has done it. I have some, did some early movies for National Film Board in the 70s. And uh, yeah, they paid me a couple of dollars, which was fine, right? And they put them up online and you can see the whole history of Canada. And CBC has a whole history of Canadian broadcasting yeah. from 1952 to 1992 that they own, that's there. And uh, I don't, it's, uh, I keep pushing. If I'm, I'm hoping that next, you know, 2022, which is a 50th anniversary, I'm kind of hoping that uh, maybe someone will come to their senses and they could, uh, they could stream it, uh, you know, three, again, 365 episodes and some of them still hold up and mm -hmm. still hold up today. Uh, yeah. That national film board, uh, I have the app and uh, I also go to the website. It is amazing there's oh, i I, I watch so many films and documentaries from like the 70s and the 80s and i recommend that to like everybody that i talk to about canadian history because it's, oh, yeah. it's, 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 it's a, a glimpse it's, in history it's a national treasure like mm -hmm. the cbc archives they're a national we paid for them and uh we uh, uh we got to be able to see them Mm -hmm. Well, I'll uh, I'll put a link to the petition uh, at least from that uh, site on my oh, yeah, sure. on yeah. my show notes just so people can sign it because I would I would love to see that on CBC Gems because uh, they got kids in the hall and stuff well, like that. It, it, so, well, it's funny. You no, know, I I enjoy going to that site for it's nice to obviously to see people, but I love reading the little notes mm -hmm. and they're got their notes from England, their notes of sketch and whatever and and wonderful little stories and and people asking CBC and. Uh, it's every time I feel a little you know, tired about trying to hit my head against the wall to see what I can do about, <laughs> about the series. It, all you do is take a look at that site and you go, okay, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. 